this isn't Christmas Sunday yet, but we are getting close, and it's nice to see all of you festively dressed this morning as we have our, our Christmas uh, wear day today. Um, let's have the lighting of our Advent candle this morning, if you would come forward. Up is on. Okay. Let you have that too. So they can hear you if you would. Suddenly, some, it? Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom their favor rests. Jesus is sent by the Father to bring peace between God and man. We are caught up by the, in the struggle, strife, and sin. Jesus doesn't come, however, to smooth over the conflicts, nor does he come armed with a mighty force to lay down our arms. Rather, he comes to die for the sins that lie at the heart of the rebellion against him. The Prince of Peace takes upon himself our sins and our unrest. As Isaiah put it, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. To receive his peace this Christmas, come to him in surrender, and through an act of faith, receive his grace of forgiveness and shalom. Our prayer, Father, forgive us our selfishness, rebellious hearts. We open ourselves to you and invite you to come into us afresh and grant us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Let's stand together as we sing our first song.
may be seated. Got a few announcements this morning. The first of which you've already figured out, and that is that we need to start using the microphone more. Uh, I discovered this two weeks ago when my, my good ear quit working. My bad ear's gone. My good ear left me for a while. <clears throat> and so, Pastor and I talked about it, talked with John. We're going to start using the microphone for welcome announcements, praise and prayer requests, things like that. And not just for those of us who are old enough to admit we need it, but especially for those on video that when they're watching, they too can complete, completely be involved. So when it comes time for your part, I'll be walking around with the microphone. Please don't be embarrassed by that. We're doing it so everyone can participate, okay? First event of the morning. Pastor, would you come? We're going to have a vote and settle this once for all. Which one of us is uglier? Oh, here, just a second. Oh, wait. There we go. <laughs> like I can compete with that. <laughs> hey, you pull that on me again, I'll have Jane stand beside you. Oh, yeah, Flash, uh, you're something all right. Okay, a bunch of important announcements today. First one is, thank you for being here. And if you're online, thank you for watching us and participating with us the best way you can. We want everyone to feel like McCutcheonville Community Church is an option for them for a forever church home. We, and I look around and see people. I've been here 19 years, and more than half of this room has been here longer than that. And that is just wonderful. It's a testimony to the fact that through thick and thin, good and bad, and even COVID, we have stayed together as a church family. So I'm so glad you're a part of, part of this church family. A few announcements. Remind you that next Sunday, the 17th, is our March to the Manger offering, right? In your bulletin is a special offering you can use for that if you want to. I want to remind you that it, we're going to be bringing those gifts forward and laying them at the feet of the altar. So if you want to put yours in the form of a Christmas package, that would be quite appropriate, okay? Also, this is it on... Uh, today on poinsettias because we're going to have them here next Sunday. Got to know today if you need one. <clears throat> this afternoon at 3 o'clock is our annual church charge conference. Uh, the pastor will be handling that for us, but any of you who wish to come at 3 o'clock are welcome to join in our conference room. Okay? Uh, the Bible study, the, the weekday, excuse me, the Wednesday Bible study is taking a little break from now through the holidays and maybe into the winter. They'll let you know when it's starting back up. That's, that's an important group of ours, but we want to be careful to, to uh, take care of everyone's needs. And through the holidays, we felt like we needed to, to call that off for a while. You can see your bulletin for other announcements, including what the food is for Tuesday. Uh, want, do want to clear up one thing. We are still having church on Christmas Eve morning. There's one service in the morning, one service in the evening. So be sure to plan for your regular 1030 service. If I'm remembering correctly, we're not having Sunday school, right? And so there's not going to be that donut and coffee time in between. This is one hour in the morning to come to church, one hour in the evening to come back for the Christmas Eve program, both on December 24. 1030, our regular time, 5 o'clock, our special service. Okay, I think I have caught everything. Does anyone else have any announcements they need to make? If you, uh, 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 if you do, raise your hand. There it is. Hang on, I'm coming, I'm coming. You'd mentioned the uh, Sunday school uh, issue on su on Christmas Eve morning. That was brought to my attention. Uh, we could either have a vote on it or I could make the executive decision as Sunday school teacher. Uh, I'm going to uh, wield the mighty power of Sunday school teachers' uh, decision making and I'm going to say, enjoy your Christmas Eve morning. Uh, we're gonna take the day off. We should get through the book of Acts next week. Remember, it won't be long now. And uh, We'll just come to church on Sunday morning on Christmas Eve. So class will be out on Christmas Eve morning. Perfect. Thank you. And again, family is such an important part of Christmas, but we don't want to give up our church worship for Christmas. Any other announcements anywhere? Uh, hang on. Here you go. On the 17th after uh, worship, we're going to go over the finances for the uh, for the for the church. Um, just a quick update, just to let you know where we are and so forth. Uh, I will tell you this: it's good news, so we're we're in good shape. Uh, but if you're interested, it'll be about a half hour, and it'll be right over here. So uh, it, that will be directly after church on the 17th. All right. I think it's time to sing again.
come up this morning? Good morning. How are we doing this morning? First of all, I want to show you something. Everybody come here a minute, just a second. I want to show you something. We've got a little V over here. It's kind of like a little feeding trough thing. And this is a manger. This is Jesus' manger. But you notice right now, there's nobody in it. It's empty. So we're waiting. And we're watching this manger every week. And we're waiting till Christmas Day when Jesus is born and put in the manger. Okay? Okay, everybody have a seat. Today I want to talk about something. I'm going to give you, now don't eat this while I'm talking. You can wait just a minute. Okay. But I want to talk to you about something. Christmas has a lot of symbols. We have a lot of different things. We have Christmas trees. We have wreaths. We have all this different stuff, and they remind us, but there are symbols of Christmas. We also have a candy cane. A candy cane is a symbol of Christmas. Why would you think a candy cane would be a symbol of Christmas? It's candy. Huh? It's candy. It's candy. That's right. But if you turn a candy cane like this, it makes a letter J, which stands for Jesus. That's the whole point of Christmas, is Jesus. If you turn it back over this way, it's a shepherd hook. It's an R. Well, it could be, yeah, if you turn it through. But it's also a shepherd's hook. Jesus is our shepherd. He watches over us. So we are sheep of, J of Jesus. If you look at the stripes on it, you notice there's red and white stripes. The red stripes, they stand for the blood of Jesus that made us clean. The white stripes, it is the cleansing power of Jesus that cleanses as us of our sins. That's kind of neat, isn't it? And then the stripes, the stripes is the love of Jesus that he took for us. And the next thing is when you open this up. And if you, if you got us, it's also yeah, it is, absolutely. Yours kind of got broke. We may have to get you another one. Um, I think it was broke when I gave it to you. Um, also, when you open this up and you put it in your mouth, it's sweet. It's candy. Jesus is sweet to us. His love is so sweet to us, and it is like candy. Okay? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for our kids. Lord, we thank you for all of these symbols of Christmas. We ask that we see them and not just know that, yes, it's Christmas. But Lord, we ask that we see these symbols and know why Christmas is here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here you go, Everett. I'll give you a new one. How's that? There we go. Okay, that happens. Thank you, guys. You can go to Children's Church. And I think they're going to plan a program today for next week. Kind of let you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, Corey's going to start on this side of the room. So if you have a prayer concern on this side, wait just a moment. I know Corey is in excellent shape. He's got his tennis shoes on, but we're going to make him work across the room slowly and not run back and forth. <laughs> joys and concerns. Anybody have any joys over here or maybe concerns over here? Anybody we need to lift up in prayer or we're shouting to Jesus, what I have, you have done for me this week, I want to praise God this morning. Anybody got any of those over here in this section? Everybody good over here today? Okay. Well, great, we're scaring everybody off with the mic. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> Anybody? We can count on Gary. Thank you, Gary. Oh, do I. Yesterday down in Tennessee, they had a big tornado. About two years ago, they had this big uh, tornado. There was a couple down there. He was a sheriff, he's a cop, and they got a new house. And this house looks down there, they'll start a family. He lost his crews in the, in the tornado. Okay. And to add to his story, 
between the Kentucky and Tennessee side is Clarksville and Guthrie. I grew up by Guthrie, and th there were five deaths in the area, and more than 50 buildings taken down, and there's still more than six, 600 homes in that one area that have no power. So very personal to me. Thank you, Gary. Okay. As you're passing across the back there, we do have a guy hiding in the back there in the sound booth that is having a birthday today. So <laughs> a after service, if you want to uh, tell John happy birthday back there, John Ray's having a birthday today. <laughs> anybody else? Any other joys? How about here in the middle section or over here? Anybody have any joys? Yes. Hi. I want to thank you, Pastor uh, Russell, for coming when Bill had his surgery uh, this week, and uh, we appreciate your prayers and being there so early. <laughs> Bill's doing better, but he's still pretty sore, but we want to praise you for being there and praise God for the, his healing. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. I'm always blessed more than you ever will be, I can tell you that. Yes. We were supposed to have our granddaughter and her family here for special singing this morning, but unfortunately they all took sick, and in that light, we just kind of wish they could have been here, but anyway, you would have met Silas at that time too, so you would know how he is doing. They're all invited back. Thank you. Uh, we had a, another surgery this week. Uh, Andy, last name? La uh, Andy's last name, I'm sorry. Oh, Andy Ward. Ward, there, thank you. Uh, had surgery. Yeah, it's all right. You're supposed to be paying attention. Uh, had surgery this week. Um, and keep him in prayer for his eye. And then Bill's surgery. Uh, and Bill's doing wonderful, I hope. And Jaron had surgery on his hand. And he said he would have been here, but he couldn't figure out how to get a shirt on over all the wrapping, so keep him in prayer. Also, if people aren't with us today, and maybe you're used to seeing their faces here, they may be homesick. You may go home and call and say, how are you doing today? We missed you today at church. And that is, goes 100 miles, absolutely, for somebody to check in on them. So, anybody else? Any other joys? Any other concerns? Okay, if none... Corey, you are dismissed. <laughs> Would you pray with me? Most gracious and loving God, Lord, this morning, we thank you for this Advent season. We thank you for each candle that has been lit and what they represent. They represent hope and they represent peace. This morning as we look at those candles burn in the light of Christ that has been brought into our service this morning, we lift you up and we praise you for a God that is so glorious and a God that is so great that he's able to create everything. But yet he is so personal that he's able to love even me and even you. Lord, we lift up all of our concerns. We lift up those on our prayer list. We pray for those people, Lord, and we, we thank you for the blessings we have of birthdays. We thank you for the blessings of, of parties that we get to go to. Lord, we thank you for our health. We lift up those that are in need this morning. Lord, we lift up maybe somebody that we don't even know, and we ask that the Lord touch them today to let them know of the love of Jesus Christ that is for them and that God loves them. Lord, let us lift all of these things up during our Christmas season. Let us lift up the love of God in, McLean, in McCutcheonville Community Church. And as we do this, let that light shine to the community around us. Lord, guide and direct us as we go through this worship service today. Let your word come to us as you want us to hear it. And let our ears hear what God is saying to us today. And we do all of this and we pray to you as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's go ahead and sing our third song. men came and laid their gifts, their offering at his feet, we come today to do the same. I'll remind you, this is our regular tithes and offerings. Next Sunday is the special March to the Major Christmas offering. Ushers, would you come please? <laughs>
Ein Blitter kommt! Ein Blitter kommt! Jim? Jim, don't, don't do it! Halt! Er ist nicht bewaffnet! Nein, Otto! My name is Jim. My name is Otto. Pleased to meet you, Otto. Freut mich. Rose, she's called. Um, it's schön. Um, it's schön. The second Sunday of Advent is about peace. When you think about peace and where it fits into the world, there is a word that is used, shalom. Shalom is not, hi, how you doing, but it is much more. To say shalom to someone is to ask a blessing for that person. As you reach out to a person in a shalom or a passing of the peace, you are giving a blessing to that person. A blessing of the abundance of God. A blessing of peace and the presence of God. Not for just that one person, but shalom means for all people, for an entire community to be bathed in the presence of God, the wholeness, the satisfaction, the fullness of a holistic well-being and the creation. Shalom is peace be with you. It is an extending of a hand and a giving of a blessing. This peace is given to each one of us and buried deep inside of each person 
that is sitting here this morning. God gave it to you when you were born. In your soul, he has created within you. He has given you a desire and a place for peace within you. But, and it's an enormous but, the world and the evils of this world breaks it and steals it away from us this morning. I'm not sure about you, but as I watched this video this morning, as I've watched it many times, but again this morning it reinforced in my mind that in World War I and in many wars before and many more World Wars after, war is a design of few that involves many. But peace is a desire of many that is sought of by all. With any time of a war of a beginning, immediately or within a few days of a war beginning, a desire for peace comes quickly. Our hearts are inviting and fighting for peace among us. And given a time and place, peace can go stronger. But if and when we choose to follow the soul that God has given each one of us, when we do that, we can place all hatred and self-interest and darkness in the world behind. Peace for each of us. Even though it shines for just a moment in a war-filled, battlefield ground, peace can still come. And that is very much shown in the video this morning as they heard the singing. And then they took the bravery to step out of the hole and to go over and to introduce themselves to the enemy. And I don't know if you saw it, but maybe I did, and I hope you did also, is they are people. And there is love and care and this peace designed within them. So as the world makes peace treaties and they are printed out. And while hope for peace is there and the scriptures tell us that their hope for peace is there. But yet there will be rumors of wars and there are going to be wars as long as the world exists. And peace always fails for one reason. And that is the enemy is still there. And it enters the hearts of men and takes away peace. As you look for peace in our daily lives, we desire peace, but yet our daily lives are desire and our turmoil in our lives and goes back as something as simple as a breakfast morning and stress of work, stress of family, stress of school and all of the things. And then you can add in on top of that health issues, financial issues can remove peace even from our households. The place that we would search for peace this morning. I read this story the other morning as I was looking at my sermon and thinking of this, and I thought, there is, I have to share this with you this morning. A friend of mine wrote on Facebook the other day that a woman that he visited in a nursing home, he was doing a worship service there at this nursing home, and as he went in, this woman was so upset and so frantic with stress. And as he went over to her, the woman told him that my house caught fire and my son was injured in the Air Force and her mother had died. Now he knew that most likely all of these events didn't all happen at the same time. But it happened many years apart, many years ago. But yet, sadly... She was living in a state that all of these events happened together. 
that they happened all at the gather. And I can't imagine that the feelings of the stress and the worry and the, the pain inside this woman of all of this reoccurring over and over in her mind. The light of the story is this. As they began to sing Christmas carols, the uneasiness and the frank, frenetic worry this woman has melts away. For this brief moment that they sang worry, sang these carols, the worry of her son faded. The anxiety of losing her house stopped. And she never mentioned the passing of her mother. For a short time, her mind was brought to peace. You see, the world that we live in brings a lot of scars, brings a lot of pain. And thankfully, we don't know all of the calamities and all the things that are going to happen to us tomorrow or the next year. But if you were like that woman and you felt trapped in your mind with this anxiety all the time, powerless to change it, I pray for that woman and I pray for each one of you that if you're dealing with these things, that the love of Jesus Christ will give you the peace of singing those carols. If you took a survey of the world and you asked them, what is one thing that you could have in this world? The overwhelming answer is peace. So what is peace? The scriptures tell us from Galatians 5.22, true peace comes not from man, but from God. Look at that again. Read that slowly. True peace. This is not peace as something that we can manufacture. This is not something that we can hold in our hand. But this is the season of peace. This is the advent. This is the very reason we highlight peace at Christmas. True peace does not come from us. We can't do it. Because it slips through our fingers just like air. This peace only comes from God. And it is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is, lives inside of me as I accept Jesus Christ. So even though this morning as we live in a world that seems like every month it seems to go darker and darker and there are more issues of hate and war and stress causing everything from the best communities in the world of divorces and people giving up on life and suicides in our life, no wonder the most thing people desire is peace. People want peace in their marriages, they want peace in their families, their workplaces, their country. And even though we have a country, we live in a country today that the poorest people live better than kings and queens years ago. We have the best medical system in the world. We have the best psychological treatment centers in the world and the best high educational centers. People lack true peace. People are without an inner peace. And I'm not talking about an inner peace that you can go find someplace else by reading a book that is going to make you feel wonderful and you can sit down and self-meditate and center on self and heal self because every time that I've preferred any one of those, I said self. It's not about me. Because anything else out there in the world that tells you you can find peace, it centers on you. It centers on self-satisfaction and positive thinking. We look for inner peace 
It is not something that we can create. Many people think that peace is something that can be defined as an absence of trouble. They refuse to face the problems. But true peace, as I said, true peace can only come from God. And true peace can only come of a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And it has to be something that is taken in and let to grow in your life. So Philippians tells us in 4, 6, and 7, do not be anxious about anything. I want you to remember that phrase right there, do not be anxious about anything. Because in the Christmas story, maybe not in these exact words, the angels come in God's plan, and this is the very first words they always say. Now, they change it to, do not be afraid. Do not be anxious. Let it all calm down. Do not be afraid. God is with you. So do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. Let your request be known to God and the peace of God. And this is an amazing thing, surpasses our understanding. We can't even understand what the peace of God is. Will guard your hearts in the mind of Jesus Christ. Peace. A word that goes beyond our understanding. We can't even figure it out. For years upon years upon years, man has tried to figure out what true peace is. But when they listen to man, they can't get it. When they listen to God, it's simple. So this morning, I want to come to you and I want to talk to you about peace. And a couple of weeks ago, as I began reading through the book of Luke, Luke, a man that wrote a book that is tremendous on bringing the good news to the people of the world. The wonderful news, the good news that starts out with the birth of Jesus Christ. But this morning, I want to begin at the very beginning of Luke in the first chapter, because as I read this the other a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, I read something that just amazed me, of how God had a plan and it's starting to be unveiled, and you have to go back and see that God has not talked to His people for 400 years. There has been no prophecy for 400 years, and all of a sudden. An angel comes to a man called Zechariah. And you notice it says he tells Zechariah, do not be afraid. For your prayers have been heard. Go back to Philippians. It says when you pray to God and put your supplications and things on God's altar, God will hear you. And so the angel comes to Zechariah and says this very same thing. Your wife will bear a son. All of this is laid out. God doesn't take anything to chance. He doesn't leave, them, leave it in our, our laps because we'll mess it up. But this is what he says. A son will, be, you'll bear a son. And his name, even gives his name, will be John. And you will have joy and gladness. And rejoice at his birth. And it tells all of the great things that John is going to do. But I want to skip over to the very end of this section. Because God is laying out a plan. And he wants everything to be just right. And this plan is for peace to enter the world. Because all of this that he tells Zechariah until the very bottom of this line, and it says what John is going to do. Here is John's calling. Here is John's purpose. To make ready for the people to prepare them for the Lord that is coming. 
This is step one in God's plan of peace. Now I want to skip to another section of Luke 26 through 33. God again is at work. It says in the sixth month an angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. A virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph in the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. This is telling the Christmas story, but it's telling the Christmas story in God's plan. We've heard it many times, but this plan for peace is given again. And God lays it out that a, a, a son will be born. A son will be born. Elizabeth was barren. She wasn't able to have children. A virgin was no way she'd become pregnant except through the love of God. An incarnate son, the son of God, the son of the living God, his only son, will come to the Virgin Mary. And he goes through and he tells her of all of this. And then the angel says this to Mary. Do not be afraid. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. For God has found favor upon you. Again, God leaves nothing to chance. Because now you will conceive and you will bear a son. And his name will be Jesus. And he will be great and called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor David. The birth of Jesus is designed to connect man and God. It is to draw this bridge, this gap that has came. And it is to bring true peace. True peace that men have searched for. True peace in God. Not based on our position. Not based on anything else but the design of God that will cause great joy. It is a time that we read these scriptures and all of this again is opened up to us. And as we gather together, and today we, we think of what Christmas is and what Advent is and a time of preparation, we start preparing our minds and we start preparing our thoughts of what Christmas is. And when I think of what Christmas is and in preparation, I start looking to the attributes of the birth of Christ. And I start thinking and I think of the birth of Jesus and exploring all of the great things that it connects us to God and it connects us to God and it matches every one of these candles that we use in this Advent wreath. And it starts with hope and it goes to peace and then to joy and then to love. And our heart begins to grow and to change. It's kind of like the Grinch movie. And I have to preference this just a minute with you. Any movie you watch or any TV show you watch, and I want to take you back if you remember Timmy and Lassie and hope I'm not losing you in the story, but i got to give you this part of it. Timmy and Lassie. Timmy would always have something, and Lassie, they would have an adventure in the story. And at the end of Timmy and Lassie, June Lockhart would sit down with Timmy and tell him what the story means. And every time she would say, you see, Timmy, this is the point. So if I ever tell you a story, and at the end of it I say, you see, Timmy, this is what you need to understand. So the you see, Timmy, of this is like the Grinch. The Grinch thought Christmas had to do with all of the bows and the buttons and everything to go with it. But he couldn't stop Christmas. And as they all gathered around, what well, the tree would have been there anyway without anything at all. And they gathered in hands and they sang together. 
the peace and the love and the hope and the joy echoed up out of the valley. And then it says that his heart grew. So you see, Timmy, joy and peace and love is what Christmas is all about. So God had a plan. He had a plan and he came about through angels. And he tells us in the scriptures and he lays it all out in Luke. And Luke does a wonderful job of telling us what Christmas is all about. And then you look over to Matthew and Matthew tells you about Joseph and the importance of Joseph. And that Joseph was going to dismiss his to be wife because of what had happened and he had no idea. And an angel an angel comes to him and says the very same thing. Do not be afraid. I am going to give you peace. And this peace is Mary is pregnant with the Son of God. And his name is going to be Jesus. And so in Luke, we have two births. We have the birth of John, which means the Lord is gracious. And we have Jesus, which means the Lord saves. And this is born to us in Christmas. You see, God has a plan, and he took all of this and he put it into play. And he took nothing to chance, and he sent angels to announce the peace. And then if you go into Luke 2, Angels come again and they go to the shepherds and they tell them the same thing. Do not be afraid. I bring you peace and great joy. The celebration of the birth of Jesus. The prince of peace. Isaiah tells us the effect of righteousness will be peace. And the result of righteousness is quietness and trust forever. As many times we, we read a scripture quickly and we don't just let it sit and let it kind of bathe us in what it sells, says because we need to understand what righteousness is. The effect of righteousness will be peace. What is righteousness? Righteousness is to be right with God. Righteousness is to align with God. Righteousness is to listen to God and what God is doing. The prophecy of Isaiah looks ahead to what God is doing and what God is going to do. So we find peace, it tells us again in Isaiah with being righteous and right with God. And then as Jesus leaves and ascends to heaven, he tells us this, peace, I live with you. And notice it says, and I put it in quotation marks, my peace, I live with you. I don't leave with you the peace of the world because the peace of the world is too fragile and the peace of the world falls apart quickly. So don't let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. God doesn't tell us once. The scriptures doesn't tell us once. Jesus doesn't tell us once. He tells us again and again and again. Don't be anxious, good people. But be at peace with the love of Jesus Christ. So how's your Christmas season going? If we were honest, we'd probably say it's pretty hectic. It's pretty busy. It usually comes with an overload schedule. A peace that seems long far away. It's the way it was whenever the prophecy of Jesus came and then 400 years of not hearing from prophecy at all. But in the beginning of Luke, after 400 years, God appears. And he turns the world upside down. He goes through this young Jewish couple that finds them in the center of something. 
that God is doing that will change everything in the world forever. Mary had to find her way through it. Joseph had to listen to God to find his way through it. Because you see, the scriptures tell us that peace comes beyond all of our circumstances. No matter where we are, peace will find its way through it. Peace defies our circumstances. So what are your circumstances this morning? Where are you at? Because I want to tell you that this morning that, that God cares about every little wince of pain that you've got. He cares about you that deeply. And he wants you to know that even though things can be hard, that he is there with you. That he can do anything. He can defy your circumstances. And the process begins right here. The process begins this morning. As you say, you know what? I need peace in my life. I need the love of Jesus in my life. Yes, I've been a Christian for years, but I, I've decided that I want something deeper. I need a deeper relationship. Maybe it's where you're sitting right there this morning. Maybe you want to bow your head for just a minute and say, you know what? Lord, let me see you clearer. Let me see you brighter. Let me see a difference in you. Because I want to make a difference in me. Or maybe you need to come to the altar and we need to pray and we need to make it more significant. And I know we don't use the altar near as much as I want us to because my thought is every one of us should be at the altar. But it comes to a decision and a time that we're looking for a peace. We're at the end of our rope and somebody said when you get to the end of the rope you tie another knot in it and you hang on. God says, you don't have to do that. He says, I've got it. I've got peace for you. The peace in Jesus Christ is born at Christmas. Let it be born into your heart. Let your heart be changed. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I don't think all of us have it, everything figured out yet. I don't. The peace of Jesus Christ, let it come into your heart and change your life. Would you pray with me? Most gracious and loving God. Lord, this morning we thank you for the word of, of God that comes into our lives. We thank you as we read it that we can see something new that God is doing in our lives today. That the, the book, the word of God is relevant today in our life. That the love of Jesus is relevant in our life today. Lord, guide and direct us and be with us. Help us through this season. But Lord, let us take time. Yes, everything is crazy and everything is hectic. We're all so busy. But let us take time to read what God is doing. Let us see what God is doing. And let us be relevant to our lives today. Let us find peace because of the hope in Jesus Christ. And as we go forward, let us celebrate that joy. And then on Christmas Eve, Lord, we're going to come back and see the love of Jesus born. We pray all of these things in your holy name. Lord, we ask that as we leave this building today that the light of Christ will go with us, that the love of Christ will go with us, and we will let that love shine amongst all people. And Lord, we ask that you will go with us and be with us. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people agreed and said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a wonderful couple of weeks of Christmas. Come back Christmas Eve. Come back next week. We got so much stuff planned next week. It's going to be great. We're going to have a lot of things. And everybody, bring your kids next week. We're going to need a lot of kids up here for a manger scene. And uh, 
God bless you all and thank you. Have a blessed week.